Hello. So today I thought I could expand a little bit upon what I um, touched upon yesterday and often touch upon, which is my opinion that there is um, a lot of value in separating these very practical Law of attraction, law of assumption, manifesting ideas that are espoused so beautifully by many and perhaps by none better than Emile Coué in uh, the wisdom that he shared yesterday and wisdom like it that he shares. It's my opinion there's a lot of value in separating that stuff, which we can call spiritual. We can call that spirituality if you want. Um, someone like Neville or Joseph Murphy, let alone someone like H. Emily Cady. My gosh, it sounds very spiritual. Nonetheless, it is my opinion that there's a lot of value in separating all of that LOA stuff, which is meant to improve your external world in some way. It is my opinion that there's a lot of value in separating that from the spirituality that doesn't necessarily improve your external worlds in any way which whatsoever. The spirituality that is about something so seemingly ineffable and almost not of this world that it makes no rational sense or practical sense to even try to explain it sometimes, seemingly. The freedom that is truly beyond words. In my opinion, it is valuable to separate those two things. Because I think the latter, which I like to call deep spirituality... Um, is very different most of the time at least than the practical spirituality which is what LOA is in my opinion. LOA is not deep spirituality for me at all. There are many, many teachers um, that I turn to if I have um, you know, spiritual questions I guess you could say or if I'm feeling like there's something off in my life, like on a deep level, not like a practical level, like on a practical level. Like if I was trying to improve my health or improve the health of somebody I knew or, you know, improve my living situation or whatever, I would turn to the LOA teachers. But if it's something more seemingly existential and hard to define, but that nonetheless seems important, hugely important, perhaps more important than those external things a lot of the time. I would turn to deep spirituality, deeper spirituality, uh, which is not the law of attraction. So I think it's it's important to, to separate the two because uh, most people don't from what I see, you know, and People are reading someone like Neville or Joseph Murphy or Abraham Hicks and they're like, this is the deep spirituality, man. And maybe for you it is. I I can see that viewpoint. For me it is not. Um, but I thought I'd read a passage today of from a teacher who I do regard as being a deeply spiritual teacher. And <laughs> that phrase is so pretentious and ridiculous like when I say it like that. But just someone who really is like, wow. You know, like this is not something I can easily define or explain. And that's okay because it's all good. Um, so th that person I'm going to read today, their work is uh, Jan Frazier from her, her classic book, When Fear Falls Away. Jan is one of my uh, favorite spiritual teachers and writers. Um, and I've, you know, I've spoken about her before, and both on these informal call videos and also my, my podcast. So I just wanted to read um, a few paragraphs from this book. 
can hear the fire engine in the background. Um, you're going to see maybe some similarities with law of attraction concepts in the language he uses here. That is interesting, and I'm, I'm interested in exploring those parallels. But there's something here in what Jan is saying that's like, in my opinion, and again, it's just my opinion. There's something here in what Jan is saying that's like, pretty darn deep. So she writes here, I am reduced now to only one thing to say, only one theme, my subject, the changed world, but it is not the world that's changed. It is only the eyes that see it. This is the story of the mind and its power to generate light, to aim it one way, but not the other. Or maybe it is the story of the mind as a lens through which the light of the world enters and bends, projecting onto the interior screen an understanding of how things are, reality defined. We all carry around our definitions. They are our supplies, a suitcase full of interpretations, little stories we tell ourselves about how the world ticks, what our lives mean, the whys and the wherefores. All of it has changed for me. I knew it watching the otter move in her liquid way through the liquid world in which I drifted yesterday in my little boat. My red boat, my oars resting. I knew it when my daughter was in a trauma, a shuddering moment in the life of the heart. And I just sat outside her heart and watched, untraumatized myself. Huh? How could that be? How did that happen? And without my entering the uproar, I was able to bring enormous resources to bear, myself unwounded. And without my taking hold of her situation, stepping in, she became mighty, let herself be vulnerable in the most blessed of ways, let her heart open to wanting love with her father, for whom she has felt so disconnected. It was a miracle. And the deeper miracle is that I never had to suffer for it. I am baffled. I am like the otter, her head breaking the surface, dripping, her fine black eyes looking this way and that at the unaccustomed world. That's deep spirituality.